Welcome to the Savvy Venture Show, connecting you with noteworthy industry change makers, movers, shakers, and innovators from around the world. From CEOs, executives, and other titans of industry, to entrepreneurs, inventors, professional athletes, authors, chefs, and other thought leaders, you'll hear from power players across industries, here to inform, enlighten, and entertain. All of this, plus travel and shopping, hot picks, and so much more. And now, here's your host, Marilee Kern. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Savvy Ventures, where we connect with high-powered experts across all categories here to share their insights and inspirations. This show highlights remarkable people and businesses throughout America and beyond with a deeper dive into the brilliant minds behind the brands. Plus, for Savvy Shopping, we also showcase hot gifts and gets. And for those out there with wanderlust, we spotlight trending travel and dreamy destinations perfect for those itineraries ahead. I'm Marketplace Trends expert Marilee Kern, and today's show is another great one. Coming up, for both business and leisure travel, we'll be learning about some amazing travel options on the Bahamian island of Eleuthera that are perfect for those with their sights set on the Caribbean. And we'll also be connecting with powerhouse nutrition entrepreneur and influencer Alana Molstein, who boasts multiple millions of followers on social media, as well as author, speaker, investor, and digital marketing expert Philip F. Smith, here to discuss how entrepreneurs can and avoid making costly mistakes when trying to scale a business. Some great stuff on deck today, so let's get to it. Joining us today is registered dietitian nutritionist Alana Molstein, who's one of the most sought after weight loss and nutrition experts in the world. She's an acclaimed public speaker, author, influencer, and product innovator. Today, she'll be talking to us about her own 100 pound weight loss story and how she turned her success into a best selling weight loss program that she scaled out to over 300,000 people. Plus, she'll fill us in on several new products she recently launched, as well as her new cookbook coming out later this year. Hey, Alana, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. You're the best. So first, re relative to your own personal weight loss journey, it's so powerful and inspiring. So I'd love to start there. So tell us a bit about how you lost 100 pounds, which as goes without saying, is just an incredible achievement. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so listen, my parents always struggled with their weight. They were always yo-yo dieting. They got divorced when I was four years old. It was a rocky, rocky upbringing, you know, just bouncing from house to house to house. And, you know, they got remarried and divorced a bunch of times. And it was just um, a rocky upbringing. And I did, my closest sibling was, you know, five years older than me. Like I was kind of on my own a good amount, you know, watching TV in the kitchen by myself. And food was my buddy. Food was my comfort. Food was my, you know, just side by side friend uh, and company at night. So I would just watch Nickelodeon on a stool in the kitchen, eating leftover takeout food and jars of peanut butter and bread rolls, literally by the roll, like a whole bag of rolls. And I would just eat and eat and eat mindlessly, but also probably in a form of numbing, um, all the emotional fluctuations going on and so forth that I wasn't realizing as consciously at the time. And, but again, like I didn't have the role models. We didn't have like the set dinner times. Like it was just, it was kind of mayhem. I started walking myself to school by myself in Manhattan. There was a corner store I would get a Snickers bar for breakfast every morning. Like that just was what was happening. And I was gaining weight year after year after year. My pediatrician, my doctor told my parents at eight years old, like, this is wild. Her blood sugar levels are high. Her cholesterol levels are high. I was only eight years old. You know, my daughter's eight. It's like kind of crazy to think about it. And she sent me to weight loss camp. She told my parents, like, there's a weight loss camp got to go. Many people know it as fat camp. I was in the youngest bunk, the youngest kid there. I went for nine weeks. So over two months in the summer, lost 30 pounds, went right back to that stool in the kitchen and gained back 50. So what did I do? I went right back to camp the following summer, lost 30, 
only to gain back 50. And I did this yo-yoing pattern of losing 30, gaining 50 for so many years. And at the point where I topped off, because right, you're gaining more weight with time, I was 215 pounds. I was only five feet, two inches tall. And I was going into high school. And that's when I was like, enough is enough. I was very grateful that I kind of was like sick and tired and done with yo-yo dieting by that, that point. People always ask me like, how do you get off the yo-yo dieting train? I'm like, exhaustion? Like, and then also just sensibility. Like, don't you just realize that like with all yo-yo diets, you're typically netting more over time like steady show like almost always not just gaining all your weight back but gaining back more I was exhausted I was done I had a change in my mindset and I decided I went back to camp and I said this time I'm gonna lose the 30 all I want to do is keep it off and so I did and so I that's when actually I started liking the scale it was one thing I always avoided I would come back from camp I wouldn't look at it again until I would check back into camp the following summer I realized that's toxic. Going on the scale frequently and making sure I'm staying within that five pound range of where I want to like be and hold that is actually really a healthy habit that I need to keep. So I'm not keep yo-yoing in this horrible pattern. So that's when I started introducing the scale. And my only goal at that point was keep the weight off. And so I did. And at that point, now I was in the 100s, what I call Wonderland. And I really focused on two pounds at a time, like just focus on staying the same weight or coming down two pounds. I never had this goal to lose a hundred because I think then I would have felt defeated. I was already so far away from what my friends looked like, like trying to pretend like I was going to look like them in two days. I already knew was not a realistic expectation. So I focused slow and steady. And I actually over high school lost an additional like 50 or so pounds. Um, and it was slow and steady and starting to work out this sense of like hacks that I like to call it because I'm a volume meter. And so I started pulling, what are the things that I did learn from like some random nutrition sessions? And in weight loss camp, you actually have dietitians teaching you. So I had dietitians and nutrition classes three times a week, every week, all summer for a few summers. So I actually started taking some things they taught me, but I actually left a lot, right? Because at that point, they were still saying six to 11 grains, like servings of grains a day and all this stuff. And at weight loss camp, you were exercising for eight hours a day. And I knew that was 100% not sustainable when a classroom setting or just normal setting. So I had to like take some things that were working and leave everything that wasn't and start working it into a plan that would suit me as a volume meter. And I remembered that, you know, vegetables were unlimited at camp. Like that was the thing you could keep going back for most kids were like I don't want to eat vegetables I'd rather just like sit down and be hungry and I was like uh 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 hunger is not an option I would go up and up and up and keep taking advantage of everything that was allowed and free so I would have unlimited vegetables and I kind of took that into practice and kept experimenting with different hacks and tools and things and um then I realized wow I'm really good at losing weight finally a lot of moms actually were asking Alana how are you losing all this weight I'm going to Weight Watcher meetings like how are you doing it this teenager and I said wow I started telling them my tips and I realized this is something I actually enjoy focusing on and thinking about because it's such a a mind change and an environmental change and an emotional change and a nutritional change and I wanted to get the utmost credibility in the space if I was going to make this a career. So I became a registered dietitian. I got my master's in nutrition. I ended up losing another 20 pounds through practice um, and now have kept it off, even lost more through having my children. And it's I love it. And that's why I, I love what I do. I love helping people because losing weight is so much more than a physical thing. It's such an emotional release. It's such a freeing ability to live life more to the fullest to do more to be more to wear the things you want go to the places you want like not be hindered by this excess weight holding you back which I find is very physical and you know emotional at the same time
It's true. And, you know, you have what I think is such an advantage. You've really walked the walk, having this personal extended experience, you know, having struggled with weight really your entire life and, you know, through trial and error and then ultimately, you know, choosing that career course. So it just brings that authenticity to everything that you do. And that your story just resonates so much. I actually had authored a children's book, an illustrated children's book called Making Healthy Choices, which is all about it. child childhood obesity. And, you know, it's just small incremental changes in your daily lifestyle. So I also Where can I order love, it? Yeah, yeah. And there's a boys and a girls edition. It's on Amazon. Um, and I love that, you know, you're making it, you know, you had your sights set on just realistic, either maintaining or okay, just one or two pounds, I want to lose not making this, you know, scary, monumental, you know, obstacle, seemingly. So you made it just, you know, achievable in those small two pounds areas. at a time is the biggest thing. And, and you always have to be humbled to learn more because you then have pregnancy, then you then have postpartum, you might not go into perimenopause, you have this issue, that issue. Now my kids start school. That means that I have to shift my whole schedule up 45 minutes, 45 minutes less of sleep can mean a big shift in increase in appetite studies show. So I have to be like more on top of things and drink more water. Like, you know, I'm, I'm always humbled by it because, you know, it's a constant thing. The solid thing I have working for me is I have a very positive mindset about it like I don't I was just talking to a mom who just like ate Papa John's pizza and gained two pounds at night at the next day and I was like you have to have realistic expectations like eating a really heavy piece of Papa John's pizza I mean like that's a weight gain food cool thing that I just learned about that as a practical thing is Papa John's actually has this like veggie bowl cool thing um garden veggie pop -a bowl where you can get all the toppings with cheese on top without equivalent of eating like almost four slices of bread on the bottom especially at night for dinner so like i'm very i'm i like things to be simple sensible sustainable practical you know i used to be a very big emotional eater and now i love food i love good food i need to eat something super delicious every single day a hundred percent but i'm not as sentimental to it because I, again I value how good it feels to feel good and I put that on a higher pedestal than just like eating all the junk food because in practicality I realize that quote unquote eating whatever you want does not get you feeling how you want and so um that that practical experience I, I do think is really important and it's important to be able to navigate the world. You don't always want to have to be in this like super controlled, you're at home and you're with your groceries, you know, figuring out whether it's Papa John's or restaurants or Subway, you know, how do you live life and you're out in the world in a way, you know, where you can just maintain those good choices. So, um, and to that point, you know, relative to the programs that you have, um, I mentioned that you have a best-selling weight loss program that's done really well in a pretty competitive and crowded marketplace these days. So why do you think what you're doing and your approach has resonated so strongly? Ah, oh, I'm so grateful for it. Um, honestly, it's better than everything else. I don't know how to say that. Um, it's very effective and it's very positive. And it's a very healthy approach to weight loss. I'll tell you what's actually made it really successful is, well, one, I've also studied what works in other programs and really left what doesn't. Um, also, I had been teaching a weight loss seminar at UCLA for 10 semesters, working with people of all different nationalities and all different socioeconomic statuses and so forth and, and races and income levels and ages and so forth. And... I really, that was honestly like my test kitchen of, of, of working the program and working the order it would work and, and when to present which principles and, and so forth. So that's been very helpful. The other things that make it really successful is we have an ongoing community, right? And that is something I couldn't have predicted. One of the things that has made my program so successful is that people do it. They get insanely incredible results they post the results on social media and these people have gone viral. So these are things I couldn't even have expected, um, which is so exciting. But like, and then when I talked to these people, I called this woman, Maria, she's lost 200 pounds, she's kept it off, she has four kids. 
200 pounds. Like she was nearing close to 400 pounds. She had uncontrolled diabetes. She couldn't get up in the morning. Her fingers were so like numb. And she was at that point, like in her late twenties or early thirties, she had four kids, one of whom had special needs. And she was like, I need to do something. I need to change my whole mindset. So she did my program, the 2B Mindset. She's now like, I have to share this with the world. Like this is the world needs it. So I'm so blessed that I have these like warriors. Like I call them like my bunny warriors who are just, they're so fed up with yo-yoing. They have found a better way and they can't not tell their friends who they see trying to make keto work and trying to make all these things work. Like they just, they have to share it. So I'm really blessed that that happened. I always say that like the to be mindset is the last program you have to do. So it's like, People still, they want to believe that it's like that quick fix and that quick fix. And like, there's been the master cleanse and the juice cleanse and the zone and the Atkins. And, and now it's God only knows what, but like, it's just, I'm sure we'll see something like, there's always going to be that quick fix that like low hanging fruit that people just want to grab because they want are they feel so uncontrolled. They just want tight, like, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. And my program is a little bit of like, I'm going to show you what to do, but you're going to start telling yourself what to do a little bit more because I really want them to. And that slight release of control for people is very hard to come to. And so my program is easier in a lot of ways because you're not cutting out everything, but it's harder in that you have to navigate the gray area of not being black and white or all or nothing. And that is something that it's hard for people um, because they want to do the black or white. But the problem is with the yo-yoing, the all or nothing mindset is people think I just need to go all in. I just need to go all out. The problem is it becomes unsustainable. So then they go to nothing and nothing mode is a lot easier to stay in longer. And then to get the energy to go from zero to 100 is immense. So that's what I'm telling people. It's like, starting at zero the day you start my program like you're not going to 100 you're not going to two you're going to go to like 55 then we're going to go to 60 then we're going to go to 65 then we're going to go to 70 then we're going to 75 and then it'll probably at that point for the last 10 15 pounds it's going to feel like you kind of are climbing like three percent three percent but there's always something you could do to unlock the next five pounds and that's why i say like my program it's a series of videos my book it's a series of chapters it's loaded with like tons of principles. You don't necessarily have to follow them all on day one, but like the more you kind of ease yourself into them, like each one will unlock the next five pounds, which is why people re-listen to my book a couple of times, re-watch the videos a couple of times, because there's always something you're not catching that you can start implementing to make a big change. Yeah. And I like it because it's not really a diet per se. It's, it really is genuinely a lifestyle change and people are really vested in the process. They have to use their own thoughts and, you know, um, self-motivation. It, they're just not being dictated everything, so to speak. You know, they're very much a part of the process. So I think that's also why it's just so incredibly effective. And I do know you're into just a ton of other things. So tell us about the new products you just came out with yeah. as well as your planned cookbook up ahead. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, I'm obsessed with creating tools that help people make the shift, make the shift from problem stating, like I hate my body to problem solving. What's a better way I can eat to feel better in my body, right? So that's like, my, I'm always trying to help people with more tools and solutions to make this shift. So they're problem solving, they're feeling empowered, they're in control of their health. So I, and then always feeling like you're still enjoying the party right? Because like, I'm a party girl. I'm a sorority girl. I like to enjoy the party. I don't want to feel deprived. I want to still live my best life. So my houseware line, Alana Housewares, is intentionally designed for mindful consumption. So like all the plates, all the bowls, all the glasses are gorgeous. They're chic. They're subtle. I have hosted meals with like a top fashion designer at my table. They're so beautiful. No one like it's not necessarily like, oh my God, these are the nicest plates I've ever seen. They're just like nice chic plates that are just beautiful. They go with any sort of tablecloth, table setting, eating with your kids, who cares, whatever. But subtly on the bottom where no one can see, but you, you see the measurements, you see um, what you're actually eating. So it's super subtle. So like 
the breakfast plates. It's just like this nice chic design. But in the back, it's showing you that for the breakfast, you want half plate protein, half plate fiber filled carbohydrates. So it's this really cool solution for everyday healthy living. I have a meal delivery service just because, you know, I've had thousands of clients over the years. They always tell me I'm doing, you know, green chef or this, that, that. None of them really work for what I want people to eat. None of them are high protein enough. They usually like load them with tons of carbs because they're cheap and they're easy. Sometimes they're frozen and the texture is not right. The flavor is not right. So I have a lot of meals. It's a healthy meal delivery service. We're named number one healthy meal delivery service by Good Housekeeping, which is really exciting. That was not paid for by any means. It's so cool. Um, they really tested all of them. And it has cauliflower rice delivered to your door, like, but with a really yummy meat sauce on top. So all the kind of foods I would tell you to eat, but like delivered to your door, um, which is awesome. Everything is high fiber made with olive oil or um, avocado or olive or coconut oil, no like seed oil, like really clean, anti-inflammatory, but delicious. Um, yeah, definitely have a book in the works, a cookbook in the works, which is so exciting. I haven't really been talking about it a lot, but it's coming. It's coming. And um, I am also working on another program uh, that's going to be actually epic. And it's been hours and hours all day, every day working on this. I'm not supposed to even tease it because we're far out from launching, but I can't help it because I'm in the thick of it. And I know how good it is. So, yeah, good stuff coming. Amazing. And yeah, you'll have to come back and talk about that when you are able to yes. disclose. And, um, you know, you're just such an inspirational entrepreneur. I love that, you know, your passion for creating programs and products and solutions that really help people realize their full potential. And just, you know, you're having a real positive impact in people's lives, probably saving lives. So it's just an incredible lane in which you operate. So thanks for coming Thank on the you. show to share a bit about it today. Thank you for having me. And I'm getting your girl book and your boy book. Uh, all right, folks, to connect with Alana online and see every incredible thing that she's up to, you can go to her website at alanamolstein.com. Okay, everyone, don't go away because on the other side of this short break, we'll be connecting with a rock star entrepreneur. So stay tuned. What is going on, Merrily? It is Richard Blaze from assorted different food shows that hopefully you've seen, including, I hope, Next Level Chef. You are known to be incredibly savvy especially with whining, dining, and travel, and sharing those experiences with others. And Marilee, what a uh, amazing thing that you get to inspire so many people, including myself today. Stay hungry, as in driven, like you obviously are. Marilee, you got some friends that love you so much. Can't wait to see you soon. Over 50 million in prizes paid, more than four million pounds lost. I'm global health and fitness expert, Jillian Michaels and I love Healthy Wager. It's a great way to lose weight by motivating you with big cash prizes. Get paid in real cash up to $10,000. Diets alone don't keep most people motivated, but with Healthy Wager participants, they often lose 30, 50, 100 pounds or more. Healthy Wager is the ultimate solution. Welcome back to the Savvy Venture Show with Marilee Kern. Hello and welcome back to Savvy Ventures, where it's all about gaining fresh knowledge and inspiration to help us live successful and enriched lives. And on that note, up next is a really interesting guest who always has amazing advice for business owners. Joining us today is Philip F. Smith, who's helped countless companies launch, scale, and even exit their business. He's made the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing private companies five times now, and has also partnered with Kevin Harrington, who's one of the original sharks on the Shark Tank TV show. He's here to discuss how to avoid making costly mistakes when trying to scale a business. Hey, Philip, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. So first, congratulations on making the Inc. 5000 list of the fastest growing private companies for the fifth time this year. That's a wonderful and really remarkable accomplishment. Is there anything in particular that you can point to that's helping facilitate that kind of extreme success for you? Uh, the number one thing is getting into the right business. You know, not every business can scale, especially since I'm still a one employee company. So I use a lot of automation, a lot of software, a lot of technology. Uh, the main business that I am in is the lead generation business where we basically generate leads for us and our clients and we monetize them. 
So that's the, the number way to do it because in order to make more money for us, we just got to spend more money. So once you figure it all out, you can just uh, raise the roof and it goes as high as you want. So I understand you're launching a chief marketing officer consulting service to help companies not make those kind of costly mistakes relative to needing more automation or when they're not able to scale well. So what exactly does this particular service entail and what kinds of companies is it suited for? Well, it's suited for any company. I used to own a consulting business that got acquired back in 2010. And I, over the years, I have worked with IBM, Intel, HP, AT&T, companies of that size. Uh, so large companies, fine. The, the largest companies are not my, uh, the greatest companies to work with, to be honest with you, they're way too slow for me. But we like the small, medium business, so it doesn't really matter the size. But the, the reason why I'm actually, we're getting back into these types of services is because we have seen so many companies over the years have come to us that you know we haven't worked with, we just met, uh, networking, et cetera, who we learned that they just made a lot of mistakes. They hired the wrong people and we try to help them out just as friends, colleagues or whatever. So with Car Kevin Harrington and some other people uh, on Kevin's level, we decided to get together and say, let's create a service offering and let's really help companies not make mistakes. So that's where we're at. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Kevin Harrington, who's one of the original sharks on the Shark Tank TV show, of course, because I was going to ask you about that. What's the nature of that partnership? And is he engaged in that chief marketing officer service that your firm offers? And really, how did that whole relationship come about to start? So I actually met Kevin back in 2018. I got interviewed by him. And then at that time, I actually pitched him to become my business partner. So we've actually done a lot of things together. Uh, in the last few months, uh, I was actually traveling and just popped in my head. I'm like, you know what? Let's create like some sort of CMO service, some sort of chief market officer service to just help companies out and uh, and build that as another revenue stream. It also backs into a lot of other stuff that we do with our PR services. We have an all-in-one marketing software. Uh, it's a platform with like 15 tools in one. So it's really just encompasses a lot of the stuff that we do to help companies grow, scale, even exit their business. But that CMO service is going to be the cream of the crop for us uh, to really dive into a company and really help them out. But yes, he 100% is involved in everything that we do here, um, whether it's through this existing business or some other businesses that we have. So he already does this. He actually took uh, the drink Celsius uh, about seven or eight years ago. We started working with them and did a lot, brought the Kardashians in and some other celebrities, built that marketing strategy. And that recently hit an $11 billion market cap. They're a public company. Uh, Pepsi bought into them, did a big partnership for distribution. So this is something that technically we've all been doing already here and there, but now we're just making it a formal service. Nice. And you mentioned that your firm has other more singular drill down services, which includes public relations, which is near and dear to my own heart. So can you articulate for the audience how PR can help build a brand, whether that's a personal brand or a business brand? You know, it's funny. A lot of people come to me over the years and say, you know, what should I do to grow my business? And it's always been digital marketing, figure out your funnels, you know, figure all that stuff out. When people come to me today, I say, build your brand. Uh, mainly because I started learn, I started doing it myself when I started seeing the impact of it by being interviewed on TV, getting published online. I was in Inc. Magazine last year because of the Inc. 5000. So all those things I started seeing for myself because I never put a lot of time into building my brand. Even though I started my first business in 1998, I've been part of five acquisitions. I never thought about building my brand. But in the last uh, year or so, I started putting more effort into it. And it's really been a game changer. So we, it's funny because everything I do for myself, business-wise, I usually turn around and say, well, let me help other people out with the same thing. So we get people on TV now. We get them published. We do all this stuff. But branding, you can't beat it. Personal brand is much bigger these days, right? I mean, usually it's a corporate brand or some sort of business brand, but there's a lot more personal brands being built today. That's what I do. That's what Kevin does and a lot of other people that I know. It's all about building your personal brand as well as a business brand. And I know there's a lot of effort that goes into all of that. So you mentioned it previously, but you have this all-in-one marketing software platform that I understand can automate an entire marketing strategy, which is pretty remarkable as a tool. So tell us how that works. Yes, so the, so 
because we do this every single day, because we use so many different softwares and we spend so much money on everything that we do, what happens is we know inside and out what a business needs. So we decided to create a, create a service around a software to help people eliminate logging into five different softwares, paying for five different softwares, learning for five different softwares. And it's just an all-in-one solution. But we also take it one step further because we do know that it is a lot. You know, not every business owner is a marketing person or understands software or can teach themselves everything. So we really provide more of a done-for-you service. So when someone comes to us, it has SMS marketing, email marketing, landing page builder, website builder, has a dialer, has reputation management, has one inbox for all your social media accounts because who wants to log into seven different social media accounts to answer people? So it, it's just great. It's a lot more than just that. Uh, but we actually set it up for everybody build out landing pages if needed, build out all the automation if needed so you can hit the ground running. But it really is a game changer and it is 100% a lot cheaper than going out and spending all the money on all these different softwares. As a marketer myself, I can really appreciate just how powerful a solution that is and how it can certainly help folks avoid making those costly mistakes, especially when trying to scale a business. So thanks for coming on the show to share a bit about it with us today. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you for having me. To learn more about Philip and the services he offers, just go to philipfsmith.com. Okay, everyone, stick around because after this quick break, we're talking international travel, so don't go away. Hey, Marilee, it's Brooke Burke. I'm checking in with you. I'm on location. Look at this beautiful destination. I had to share it with you because I know you're all about savvy living and staying fit and living your best life. I love what you're doing for everyone. Your gift ideas are so helpful and your destination recommendations, amazing. I thought you'd really, really love this. I'm sending you so much love from the DR. Wish you were here. Let's stay connected and keep doing it. It's great stuff. Bye, Marilee. New Salon Pass Lidocaine Flex. Maximum OTC strength. Super thin. Flexible. Contours to the body. So it really, really sticks. Salon Pass. It's good medicine. Welcome back to the Savvy Venture Show with Marilee Kern. Hello and welcome back to Savvy Ventures, where we not only chat with power player experts and celebs, but we also showcase fabulous travel destinations. And as always, I have great ideas for you. So buckle up and away we go. Situated in a prime location on the island of Eleuthera in the Bahamas is the spectacular Snaresbrook Manor. This exceptional 8,000 square foot vacation home spans across a private 2.2 acres and sits directly on a mile long pink sand beach. Owned by fashion designer Patricia Nash, Snaresbrook Manor offers seven and suite bedrooms and nine bathrooms in the main house, plus a separate on property apartment with with living room and fully equipped kitchen, all exquisitely designed by Nash using high-end furniture and decor from around the world. This sprawling estate comes complete with 200 feet of private beach, a 40 by 25 foot heated beachfront pool, on-site orchard and commercial grade catering kitchen designed to host high-end vacations and luxury retreats with versatile lodging for up to 18 guests. It also features a media room with an 80-inch surround sound TV and state-of-the-art kaleidoscope movie system with hundreds of on-demand movies, stations, and all cable networks. Other deluxe amenities include an office nook with a full-size desk equipped with multiple power sources and a color printer, as well as an exercise room with commercial-grade equipment, covered pergola and cabana with bathing area and bathroom, and a state-of-the-art water filtration system. Daily housekeeping and concierge services are also included in each stay. This space is ideal for those looking for extra privacy while also being able to enjoy a family vacation amid magnificent ocean views. Plus, this property is walking distance down to the beach and to various beachfront restaurants and bars and is a short four-minute drive to town. Learn more and reserve your stay at snaresbrookmanor.com. 
for those visiting the Bahamian island of Eleuthera and desire authentic on-site or on-location dining experiences via private chef services, Horatio Alexander Catering is for you. Operated by Bahamian natives Horatio and Ashley Smith, they offer sumptuous Caribbean fusion cuisine with a special focus on ingredients that heal the body, mind, and soul. Whether it's dinner for two, a family, friend, or work group, or full scale wedding, Horatio Alexander Catering Services will always feel personal. As a self-named energy chef and certified wedding planner, Horatio brings over 18 years of event planning, food and beverage, hospitality, and tourism experience to his work that's driven with passion and heart. In fact, love is Horatio's and Ashley's ethos, and this dynamic duo spreads love with each dish of divine dining. Learn more and see menu at islandhospitalitygroup.com. For those who will be in South Florida late October, should be sure not to miss the 11th annual South Beach Seafood Festival taking over the sands of South Beach this October 18th through 21st. This Florida Seafood Festival is not your typical East Coast Seafood Fest, but a curated showcase of the best talents of South Florida's leading chefs and culinary masterminds via a diverse group of events where guests experience the best seafood in Miami and kick off world renowned stone crab season. Brought to you each year by Breakthrough Beverage and Partners and produced by CI Management, this event is touted by USA Today as one of its top five specialty festivals in the country, listed by Forbes in 2019 as top five things to do this fall, and cited by the Travel Channel as the best seafood festival in the United States. When you hit Miami in October, the South Beach Seafood Festival is the place to be for four days of fun, all to benefit a great cause in Miami-Dade County with CI Foundation's Eat Smart program, an initiative that provides healthy meals and nutritional guidance to Florida's youth with programs in Miami-Dade County Public Schools. This Saturday, October 21st, Beachfront Seafood Festival, brought to you by Herradura and hosted by the City of Miami Beach, will span four blocks and welcomes over 15,000 seafoodies to enjoy a day of fun in the sun. Indulge at hand-selected pop-up cafes from Miami's best restaurants with the freshest seafood menu items to choose from. These are paired with more than 30 complimentary open bars for those 21 and over, as well as fun and games and culinary demos in the Malam's Market Culinary Showcase. There's live music stages and so much more right in the heart of South Beach. A seafood event like no other, South Beach Seafood Festival includes a week of nightly culinary events leading up to the Saturday epic daytime event, including an incredible Friday night VIP chef showdown. The ultimate night of competition where the best South Beach chefs hit the sand for an epic throwdown beach bash. It'll feature 20 chefs and 10 battles amid one and a half blocks of this serious culinary celebration on the sand. If you're a seafoodie, be sure to hit Miami this October and experience the best of the best of South Beach Festival extravaganzas. Learn more and buy tickets for the various events at SobeSeafoodFest.com. That's S-O-B-E SeafoodFest.com. Well, that was another super informative and inspiring show, and I really appreciate that you listened in. All right, everyone, that's it for this episode of Savvy Ventures. If you missed any part of today's show or just want to listen to any part of it again, just go to SavvyVentures.tv. You can also connect with me on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and LinkedIn at Marilee Kern. Until next time, remember that everything begins with an idea. Thank you for listening to the Savvy Venture Show with Marilee Kern, connecting you with noteworthy industry changemakers, movers, shakers, and innovators from around the world. Plus, travel and shopping hot picks and so much more. Follow us on social at Marilee Kern.